The next is going to be 27 by 27, which is going to be 9. The next is going to be 36 by 36, which is going to be 16 of those squares. So if you're familiar with the inverse square law, I'm doing the inverse square law, which is 1, 4, 9. I'm sorry, I said 16. It should be, yeah, that's right, 16. It's going to be 16. So depending on your grouping, how many of these you have to make a torus, you get more and more spires, and you get more and more conductors and more nested vortices circuits with different amounts of vortices. So they have to be constructed perfectly and phased perfectly to get the right, uh, right effects. Otherwise, you're cutting across the circuits in a bad way, and the the motion doesn't occur correctly. It's not centered on its axis like it should. And the magnetic fields will be much weaker. All right, so here everything's one spire in a 9 by 9. Now here I have 18 by 18. You can see it's four times the size of this one. All right. Um, so, we're, so if I put one of these, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I have two spires. One is my reds here. So if I connected these end to end, what it would really look like, those, that diagonal motion of the red tiles this way, it would look like this. You would be seeing this spiral over the surface of the toroid. So that's what I'm showing you. My regular doubling circuits on this model are, are here. They're going from red to green to red to green. So they're doing the positive, negative, positive, like that. Red to green, red to green. Those are my regular circuits, but my spires are going across. Now once I do 18 by 18, I'm going to have six nested vortices circuits. And I'm going to have 12 conductors, and I'm going to have two spires. Alright, so I'm going to have the red ones and the green ones. And it's very interesting how these spires polarize. It's, it's very significant. It's what's trying to be achieved in the standard rodent coil, but I believe that it, because, of the, because of the additional complexity of this, which is far beyond what's being done, and that it really changes how you have to do it to create the field. Ultimately, what these coils are, aren't even electrical coils. They're field generator coils. What we're looking for is the secret of magnetism. So here, again, is a 27 by 27 now. So all that means is I got 27 on my vertical, 27 on my horizontal. Now with the 27 by 27, where remember I had three nested vortices circuits here, six here. I'm going to have nine nested vortices circuits here, which means I have 18 different wires, 18 conductors polarized. I also have now three spires. So I went one, two. Three. You can see just the added colors. Went from red to red to green to red to green and orange. So now I have three spires going over the top of the circuit. So you can start to see how this is a clear algorithm. It's just it's complete, true, whole number fractal. Interesting though, while my spires change, just like I was showing you here, or on this map is the same thing my nested vortices sequence numbers never have to change. It's just that the more you add of these groups of nine, the more spires you get, but the sequence orders never changes. So when you're modeling, um, this is really the secret to modeling the atom, doing the periodic table. So I guess I'm giving it away. Um, let me look at this one. Here's a 36 by 36. All right, you've got now I have, uh, I'm going to have 12 nested vortices. Notice my, if I do family number groups too, uh, so if I'm doing family number groups and I say this is one for instance because I have one spire, one group of nine by nine, now when I'm basing it on Anyway, that's, it's too complex for me to say in words what I'm trying to say, which is the relationship of the way that these numbers multiply together. Some are multiples of 3, some are multiples of 6, some are multiples of 9, some are multiples of 1. So when you want to model a progression, it's all based on this. This is the way to do it. 
So back to what I was saying, a 36 by 36, I have now got 12 nested vortices circuits. I've got uh, 24 wire conductors, if you're using wire, or 24 pathways is what I would prefer to say. Uh, I don't think that this kind of coil can be built in the standard way. It's going to require a better construction. Um, so I have that many, and now I've got four spires. All right, but I've just been showing you the spires. I could also show you the patterns of how the spires are polarized, and I won't explain this, but here's now my 9x9, nine nine, but I've got two colors representing my positive and negative aspects. And again, these are interlaced, when you put numbers to them, interlaced doubling circuits, um, giving you all your numbers over top of the numbers. <laughs> if that makes sense. So here's the positive and negative for 9x9. Nine nine. Here's 18x18. 18 18. You can just follow the pattern. 27x27 27 27. is getting more complex. 36x36. 36 36. It just goes on and on. I have the pattern to scale it from micro to macro to infinity. Okay, I can show you here. This is in base 50. This is a 49 by 49. You can do the same thing. The algorithm always holds up. So this is, in order for you to maintain the principles of your symbol, to have your unbroken multiplication series and circle modeling truly 3D to have your doubling circuits. This is the only way you can do it. You have to have a minimum of three nested vortices circuits. That allows these vortices to sequence. When they do, you can get this effect. This is the electrical venturi. Okay, as the doubling circuits are winding in this yin-yang pattern, which I showed in my other video. You get these spires going over, and notice they're always in quadrature. All my threes are here in quadrature. My sixes are here in quadrature. My fours are here. So as the number groups and the vortices are sequencing, you actually are still maintaining this pattern of the spires, but they're along this arc of the the uh, this logarithmic spiral so it's a much more complex sequence I do have it I have the understanding of the sequence to make perfect mirror imaging and to be able to construct any coil and any multiple of this and to connect it with every single geometry that's basically what I found you can do every single geometry simultaneously by modeling these emanations and they're over interlacing spirals.